All right, so today we're going to be installing a brake controller into a WK Jeep. So this is going to be going into a 2008.5 CRD diesel. So uh, I've gotten a fairly inexpensive brake controller. It's just the uh, the cheap Reese one that's good for uh, one or two axles. So one thing you want to make note when you look at these is that the wire colors might not be what you expect. So black is positive white is ground and the white has to go back to your battery so keep that in mind the blue is a uh, brake out to the uh, back of the vehicle and then the red is your uh, stop lamp switch so uh, there are a couple different wire gauges on this thing for some reason I suppose the ground doesn't need to be very big because it's supposed to go through the trailer so go in through the positive and out to the trailer then the ground is only to operate the uh, base unit. The brakes uh, don't get grounded through that. And then uh, the stop lamp switch again is kind of small. It's a, a bit longer wire. It might reach the stop lamp switch uh, all on its own without being extended. So uh, for the ground, for whatever reason, they recommend using number 12 wire for everything. They don't really get into great detail. And I thought, oh, I'll just do what they say rather than second guess it. So you can see this is a reducing uh, crimp here. It goes from a, a red to a blue. So I've never used one of those before. Hopefully that works out. You'll need to get about 10 feet of uh, 12 red, 12 black, and 12 blue. And then uh, probably some 14 gauge wire for the stop lamp switch if this doesn't reach for some reason. So I'll take these uh, supplies out of the way. These are the instructions here. Like I said, uh, the colors may not be obvious to you, that's why. I started wiring this up a couple days ago and didn't look at the instructions and had all the wire uses wrong. So I'm glad I looked at the instructions before I did the final wiring, otherwise it probably would have damaged the unit. So uh, you need some basic tools for this. You should have like an uh, X-Acto knife. This is a, uh, a crimper for insulated terminals. It takes two hands worth of force to crimp it for the most part, but you get a perfect crimp every time. I like to use uh, clear crimps so you can see that the wire is in all the way. You kind of want to cut the wire so We'll show you on something I've already crimped. Hopefully this will focus. There we go. You want to have the copper into the uh, center divider and then you want the insulation in the uh, actual connector. You don't want the uh, copper sticking out here. That's a poor wiring practice. And I have uh, a wire stripper. You can set the uh, depth gauge on it, but once you get used to how to use it, you can kind of guess how much uh, overhang you need to get a good crimp, or sorry, a, a good uh, wire strip. If you use the X-Acto knife, you can uh, accidentally trim pieces of copper off, and again, that's bad wiring practice. You don't want to be cutting off strands. You should use uh, a wire cutter or a wire stripper if you can. I've got some uh, various ring terminals. There's going to be uh, a 20 amp breaker that's going on to the battery positive terminal. There's actually just, uh, an accessory connection point in the fuse panel we're going to hook onto. So I think that's going to be like a quarter inch stud. And then uh, I would have preferred to have a breaker that had a uh, bolt on connectors on either side that you could bolt to the uh, firewall but I couldn't find one, so I ended up getting a, a fuse holder and then a fuse style breaker, which is not waterproof, so we'll have to protect that when we put it in uh, the engine bay. And other than that, we've got some uh, dual wall shrink wrap. When you're buying shrink wrap, always get the dual wall because it has like a, a protective coating that flows out when you uh, heat this up and that keeps moisture from going into the connector. You could also get uh, 
crimper or crimps that have a dual wall shrink tubing on them. I don't think these ones are, but they do exist. Then you need some kind of a heat source to uh, shrink the uh, shrink tubing. So just looking at what we've got here, I got some uh, butt splices so I can hook this into the wire and again the ring terminal. Then the ground, you'll look on the uh, driver's side fender just above the battery, you're going to find a, uh, a ground stud there that you can uh, ground the uh, brake controller to. As they say to bring it back to the battery, you can't bring everything right onto the battery terminal but that's an actual like uh, approved grounding point on the uh, chassis of the vehicle. So I recommend you use that. So I'm just going to stop the camera for a second and then we're going to uh, crimp a couple of wires. Alright, so I got the uh, fuse holder slash breaker holder here. So we'll have to shorten the uh, terminals. This is meant to reach into a deep fuse panel and still plug in. You put it up against it and it looks like we can remove the first two tabs. I'm just going to use my side cutters to do that. But again, I recommend using a, a bolt-on style. Then I'm doing this inside because it's winter out there right now. And uh, you can get everything prepped up before you go outdoors. So that's uh, the reason why we're doing that in here. So these are not waterproof where they've crimped them onto the plastic base. So I've got some... Uh, rubber tape that I'm going to be putting over this just to protect it. I haven't read the instructions on this but some of this uh, stretchable uh, splicing tape can be carcinogenic so you need to wash your hands after you use it. So it's like self amalgamating. It starts off as like strands of regular tape but if you stretch it as you, you stretch it as you're wrapping it around and then it turns into a, a solid piece of rubber that's going to cover this. And uh, so I've got the splice onto the end of the wire. The copper is just sticking out a little bit. See if I can do this with one hand or not. See, so just pick the blue. You can actually kind of like have the plier on the uh, crimp before you put it on. Actually, I guess I can do it with two hands. Didn't fall out. And then it just pops open when you've got it uh, crimped all the way. So you can't do a bad crimp. So I recommend these. I don't recommend doing solder. Crimps are the way to go. You won't see a modern vehicle with solder anywhere. So I'm going to have this. i got to put the shrink tubing on it in advance so that uh, I don't uh, forget after the and have to cut the crimp off afterwards. So you need an overhang on the other side there. So put that there. I've got the other one on there. So that's sort of ready to go. And uh, I've cut off, I don't know if they're like seven foot pieces of wire for everything. Because again, it's cold outside. So I just want to have everything ready to go. And then uh, I'll snip the excess off when I get outside and worry about uh, how to use the scraps later. So you kind of pull that off. You've got about the right amount of stick out there. So I'm going to kind of switch the colors here a little bit so that it makes sense when I've got it wired to the, uh, the vehicle. So I'm going to take the red, which I know is positive, and crimp on the, uh, the black rather to the red so that when I have this hooked up to the fuse holder, it makes sense to me. So you want to make sure you get all of the strands in. You can see that I've got the right num a length of uh, crimp here. These are sort of undersized. You're supposed to use uh, a yellow with a number 12, but if you're careful you can get the uh, blue to take a 12. So you slide that over that. So, like I said, you can have this in positions generally. So I've got that one there. Going to go blue to blue. So I'll show you what I mean. You can crimp, clip this on here. It kind of, it's ready to go.
the blue is staying inside of the uh, cab of the vehicle. We'll show you where that goes afterwards. So it doesn't need to be as long as the uh, positive and negative. So like I said, you don't want to have too much insulation removed because it's bad wiring practice to have it sticking out. I'm not going to do the red right away. I'm hoping it reaches. And uh, the white is going to become a black wire. So we'll do that one next. I got a bit of wiring loom I'm going to try to put on the here as well. So that's why I use the uh, reducer type connector for this guy here. Because they're different sizes. So that's good. I'm not putting anything on uh, these ones because they'll be inside the uh, cab of the vehicle. It's not a problem. The concern of them getting wet, unless your windshield is leaking and then your firewall is going to rot out. You have lots of other problems. So I'm going to try to uh, snake the uh, blue, the white, and the black into this loom and kind of have the loom end near the uh, firewall exit so that I can just snip this wire, the blue wire down onto the uh, wire going to the uh, connector for the trailer. And then the other two wires I'll have a more additional piece of loom to carry on and go out. So uh, I won't be doing this on camera. The important part is that when you cut it, you have to heat it with uh, something like a lighter or what have you. Lighters will end up burning your fingers, so that's why I got the barbecue lighter. Or you can use lots of different options you can use. Basically, you want to kind of push it to expand it, and then you can slide the, the wire through. But if you're going long distances, it can be a bit of a pain. So uh, anyway, I'm going to turn off the camera and... Uh, Maybe we'll be outside next part of the video. All right, so we're outside now getting ready to work on the Jeep. So this vehicle has the uh, factory towing package. And because it's a uh, later model of 2008 slash 2009, it has uh, trailer sway protection. On some vehicles it's disabled and you can go into the uh, computer and enable it. If you go to the dealer or if you use uh, some different software that's available. So uh, to hook up to the battery, what we're going to do is uh, grab on in here. There's a hose available for the uh, battery positive. So as you can see there, I didn't use shrink uh, tubing on those connectors. They're for radios, so they're not as uh, critical. But the braking is very critical to your safety. So uh, I'm going to be heat shrinking those ones. I may go back and correct those because I'll have them off. For the uh, ground, you can go by the uh, hood switch. There's a spot. And also right beside the battery is a, uh, another spot on the firewall or the uh, fender well where you're going to ground onto that. You go through the firewall. You can see there's a spot that was soft stuffed in it. That's, uh, there's a rubber grommet that goes over that blue plate which is very hard to uh, put back on, so you probably won't be able to put it back on after you go through there. So that's why I just stuck a sock in the hole so you don't get cold air blowing into the vehicle. And uh, I also put a front electric locker in the vehicle, so that's what that wire is it's going across there. So go to the back quickly. So this uh, is the factory tow hitch on here. So it's, uh, for this vehicle, it's rated for 7,400 pounds if it's a two-wheel drive diesel. Look in your manual for towing ratings. It tells you the front square footage of the trailer, the tongue weight of the trailer, and various different things that you need to know. Then it has the seven pin and the four pin attached. If one of these becomes damaged, you can replace them together. There's just a big connector on the back and you can plug in a new one. I clean that out after I use the vehicle. 
and towing in the winter or whatnot, you don't want it to be full of uh, salt. That's the flaw with the four pin connectors especially, they get corroded very easily, as you will uh, find out. So I'm just trying to think if there's anything else we have to say while we're back here. Uh, probably not. I'm probably going to do a video on these uh, Reese tow balls. Because, uh, sorry, not Reese, U-Haul. Uh, Normally I use Reese, but the uh, if you're going to tow a U-Haul trailer, they have some weird weights on their tongues. So you need to use like one of their balls because they have uh, much higher ratings on them than you would expect. Like you can tow a 7,500 pound U-Haul trailer using a two inch ball, which you normally need a, a two and five sixteenths. So uh, they'll come and check that before you leave uh, with the vehicle to make sure you've got the right rating. And more than likely you end up buying a, a ball from them. But uh, the good thing is their prices are very competitive. They sell a lot of these things. And you don't need torque wrench to tighten these on. So I'll probably do a video on that shortly. So uh, I'm just gonna grab a few things that blew out of the back of the vehicle and then we'll pop into the engine, or sorry, in the uh, driver's spot there and take a look there. All right, so uh, because this vehicle has the uh, factory towing package in it, there is in fact a, uh, a wire that goes from uh, the brake pedal area that goes to the back where the trailer connector is. To access it, you can sort of see it above the uh, hood uh, latch. If you looked in there, I've already moved it. So I just grabbed my flashlight here so I'll show you where you're looking. So you wanna look, there's two big connectors here and just above it, you see there's a, a green wire in there. So, let's see if we can see it or not. Yeah, it's that green wire hanging right there. So that's what we're gonna hook onto the uh, blue wire coming out. Then further up, I don't know if we'll be able to see it or not. The stop lamp switch. It's got that, that's that white connector there on the left side of the steering column. So we'll take a look at that. I'll remove it. If you have an older vehicle and you haven't replaced the stop lamp switch, you will probably damage it doing this and you'll have to replace it. So keep that in mind. You'll need to check the back of your vehicle. Your light might stick on afterwards after doing this. It may not be absolutely necessary to remove this panel here to get to that wire, but uh, I found it was helpful. You can see the major wiring coming out of the vehicle here as well. To do that, you lift up the first piece here. See there's a pin there that holds it down. And there's uh, three more pins. And if you ever want to know the uh, body code or color codes in the vehicle, you pop off a piece of trim, you can see how they're made up. And you can see that's a 2017, very late piece there. There is a hush panel around the pedals normally, and then a knee panel up here I haven't had that on for uh, over a year now you could put it back on but I'm in and out of here doing different things like I got radios here I ran the wiring for my uh, front locker I haven't finished it yet so I never put it back together now being that it's a very cheap brake controller the uh, position doesn't matter so I just hooked it into this plastic piece underneath of the uh, key ignition switch. You can slide it back and forth. And uh, there's no metal in here, so you could just go into the plastic. And it's a good spot if you're a right-handed person, dominant hand, because you can just grab the lever and push it to uh, do different things with the trailer. Now, I'm not going to explain much about how the brake controllers work. That's something you need to learn on your own. And again, this is an uh, instructional video. But I'm not going to take responsibility for your safety, so you need to do your own research, which may be partly watching this video, but you've got to read all the instructions and know what you're doing, because uh, it's conceivable I make a mistake here unknowingly, and you need to res be responsible for your own safety. But I'm trying to help out, and it's not anything intentional. So you put the, that there. It's Like I said, it's a cheap brake controller. It's not uh, inertia related as far as I know. It's just uh, a timer on it. 
and it's only one to two axles so that's why it's only 20 amps if you go to a three or four axle controller they're typically about 30 amps but I've used one of these before and I was pretty happy with it so I'm not concerned about uh, getting a more sophisticated brake controller so uh, I guess what we'll do next is uh, tuck in some of the wiring here and uh, start hooking this up all right so things are coming together here I've got the brake controller mounted and like I said it's uh, easy to reach you can use that just to turn on your brake lights if someone's tailgating you and you don't have a trailer and uh, I'm not sure if that will kick you out of uh, cruise control or not but I wouldn't really recommend using cruise control when you're pulling a trailer anyway and uh, you can mount that one in any position as I mentioned before I think so when you're running the wires you got two things to consider one is you have a tilt steering wheel and in this vehicle you've got pedals that move back and forth so what I do is I hoop them over this black round part here that is not the ground for the trailer that's something else and uh, out that hole in the back so this wire here is going to snip on to the green wire in there that's probably almost invisible there it is so you got to hook those on there and uh, get ready for power so things came through pretty nice I got the loom on the uh, black and the red that'll go there and then this guy we got space underneath that bolt I'm gonna use that so uh, I'll do a little bit of wiring here and then we'll uh, jump back into it again all right so we're gonna try to get the uh, stop lamp switch out of the vehicle now this is one of the trickier parts so if you can tell or not I'm gonna turn it 45 degrees see if we can see anything it's not going to focus on the right spot we turn that 45 degrees towards the uh, driver's side and you pull it back now it's free so you'll see there's a mushroom tip on it again this is all quite hard to see so you mount the flashlight on my hand here while I hold these are automatic setting you just pull that out all the way and it'll adjust so like I said you just pull it out it's recessed right now because I push it in you pull it all the way out and you put it back in and you turn it this way the, the item of interest here is it is the second wire from the mushroom or the firewall that is our stomp, stop lamp switch so it's uh, labeled number two so I'm going to snip that off strip them back and twist them together and put the two uh, strip pieces in here and uh, clamp them down onto that all right so I made my uh, splice here and I'll tell you that was a pretty challenging connection to make if you can see that right there they provide a wire tap you can put on there and you might want to go that route it's uh, pretty hard there's not much uh, slack wire there to do this so keep that in mind and then you have to have this working again for the uh, stop lamp switch to work properly so uh, that's probably the hardest part of the whole project is to splice onto the uh, stop lamp switch so I'll get the stop lamp switch back into place you just put it in on that 45 degree angle and then you clock it back towards the passenger side and that'll be uh, ready to go after that all right so the uh, one red wire there is the stop lamp switch and it's uh, pretty close to the uh, steering shaft so you'll have to look out for that so it doesn't get bound up around your steering and ripped off you wouldn't want that to happen I've got the blue wire tapped on here so I just have to, I just got the zip ties on pretty loose right now because the uh, tops of these uh, brackets are very sharp so I need to put some kind of protective uh, material over them before I tighten up the zip ties but at this point we are done inside the cab of the vehicle other than putting the trim pieces back on so uh, 
I'll move out to do the ground and then put the breaker on the uh, battery. All right, so we're uh, done the install now. We got the uh, wire tucked in there. It's too cold to use uh, my little butane heater. I forgot about that issue. I would have had to keep it inside to keep it warm. This is rubber taped. I need to come back and put electrical tape over the rubber tape because the uh, rubber tape needs to be protected or it'll just wear through. Got to stick my sock back into that hole there where the uh, blue grommet is. So just drop that down. That's uh, pretty good the way it is there. Just tuck that there. I was able to get the ground on here. It was a number eight to get that bolt off and a number 10 to get the nut off there. Let's see if we can show proof of the uh, brake light working. That's with the pedal. So I verified the pedal still works. I'm gonna probably can't reach. I think if I go through the vehicle, we can see the light work when I use the... Uh... Yeah, I think you can see it. That's me using the brake controller to turn on the light. That's just the Hello. scanners coming on. Um, so then this Hello. Hello. is working. Hello. It's kind of funny with the scanner, so... I thought I'd get all kinds of interesting business going on, but it turns out it's mostly like uh, pre-teenage girls playing with radios for the most part. Oh, that's the Ministry of Health page coming out, so that's when they dispatch an ambulance. So anyway, enough uh, playing with that. So uh, that's the install. I gotta tidy up the interior body panels, do the uh, shrink wrap later, but uh, we are all set. So uh, thank you for watching. Hopefully this is helpful.